We're doing Counter War Gaming. I'm Jay, and today we're going to do another Trash to Treasure Terrain video. And we're going to be building these sweet little throw terrain pieces that can be used as, you know, rock formations, forests, what have you, out of CDs. <laughs> So here's our CDs, and the first thing we need to do to these, before we do anything else on them, like we're going to make a couple of different types of terrain pieces out of these right now, uh, but before we do anything else, we've got these horrible holes in the middle. So I've just got here some duct tape, it doesn't have to be yellow duct tape that you use, use the normal silver stuff, I just happen, this happens to be the only type that I have, and all I'm doing is more or less ripping a piece and taping over the hole. It's not rocket surgery, I'm just going to do that on all five of them. Now that there's no holes in our CDs, we can actually turn these into terrain pieces. So I just have here a piece of random packaging from something, you know, that standard expanded white styrofoam. And then I have here a bunch of sticks, which uh, I collected a bunch a whole while, a whole bunch a while back and uh, dried them out so that way I could use them as trees and various other plant terrain pieces, fences or what have you. And so that's what I'm using today. I'm going to break these up into smaller pieces. Obviously I don't want a tree that's that tall. I'm going to break these up into smaller pieces. As well I'm going to break this foam up into a bunch of little pieces and then we'll go from there. camera I've just had my glue gun heating up hopefully it's hot enough now that I can start working with it uh, and basically I'm gonna take a look at my styrofoam pieces as well as my sticks and just take a good look at them some of them like this one here might actually be able to be used as sort of a rubble structure uh, most of the time I just use this stuff as rocks I don't like using it as buildings because it tends to be very crumbly but we're going I'm gonna show you how to combat that and so even the ones here that have a flat side can sort of be used to represent ruined structures. Like I say, that is clearly a wall, right? I can even just break that little curly part off, and that is clearly a wall, right? No problem. And then any of these smaller ones just look really random. They can be rocks. So we're going to build three different types of terrain pieces with these five CDs. We're going to build a couple of forest pieces, we're going to build a couple of building pieces, and then maybe just a rock piece, just to sort of center it all off and that's basically going to be it. So I've got my hot glue here. Um, you want to make sure, now this glue gun I actually have has a high and a low setting. So I'm going to use it on the low setting because it will still melt this a little bit on the low setting but not as much as it would on the high setting. If you are scared that you're going to melt the styrofoam too much because of the fumes and what have you, you can actually use PVA glue as well. It's just not going to stick as well to the plastic. So the reason I'm using hot glue is just because it makes it easier to stick to the plastic of the CD. Uh, so I'm just going to get creative here and go crazy with some hot glue and make myself five quick little terrain pieces. Tangle in your tree branch The can dragged by your just merry car I'm the garbage on display now, as I mentioned in an earlier jungle terrain video that I was building the forest trees out of these sticks, once you stick the uh, stick on, stick, 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 stick onto the CD, you uh, can basically just cover the outsides with a big mound of hot glue. This way it sort of creates like a sleeve around the stick and will help give it kind of a base. And because it's hot glue, it'll just kind of seep down and create a nice tapered sort of glob around the bottom of the tree which actually believe it or not once it has sand and rocks and things on it will somewhat simulate roots and the fact that the tree is growing out of the piece just like that so I'm just gonna hold that there till it dries I'm gonna throw a bunch more on probably tear you to pond, like sponge absorbing a town too many lives can drag a man down I'm the black twin of your stars Now, I've 
got two forest templates done here, two building templates, and a rock template. But I don't want to just put the sticks on the forest templates. So obviously I'm building this as a set. So I'm going to want to incorporate what I have left of my sticks into the other pieces just to unify things. And I might even take a piece of styrofoam or two and put them into the forest pieces just for a little rubble here and there. Go. If it were in my hands, I'd probably tell you to the garbage on display for your celebration day I'm the black twin the your stars I'm the black between your stars so for the branches I've just got I, like I said in the last scene all my sticks I've got here my pin drill hobby clippers and crazy glue and then a whole bunch of paper clips. Now I probably won't even need that much, but whatever, they're paper clips, right? A buck, I got a whole bunch of them. So basically, I'm just gonna wanna pin, like you would pin a model, uh, all the branches wherever I want them on these trunks. Now some of the trees I can just kinda leave as is, like this one here. Kind of already has some branches going on. I'm just gonna leave that one the way it is. But the big ones, especially that don't have any branches, maybe even that one I'll leave how it is. The big ones, though, that don't have any branches, I want to add branches to them. And in fact, a lot of these sticks that I have here are too long because I don't actually want to make them too big because we're just gonna put some clump foliage on this to finish them off real quick, easy, nothing complicated. Um, so I'm just gonna maybe break a bunch that are like maybe an inch long and then uh, I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna put my holes from there. Cool, so let's say I want to put a branch or two on this one. I decided I want one coming up sort of out of the top. What I need to do though is when I put these in I want to make sure that I drill in on an angle into the trunk not straight into the trunk because Generally speaking, branches grow up and out, not straight out. So, uh, more or less, in order to do that, now you're going to find if you try to actually start the hole on an angle, you're just going to slip right off the surface, like your drill bit's not going to grab. So you want to start it straight. I'm just going to start one here for you. And then once you're a little bit in, and if your sticks are really dry, this pin drill should go through really easily. You can just turn the bit up and then continue drilling from there basically allows you to grab and then you can set your angle however you want it. Cool. I got myself a good hole there, I drilled in a good distance and I'm just going to pick some random branch and then what I'm going to do is drill directly down the center of it. So try and line your bit up with the branch from two angles, look at it from above and look at it from the side and from two or three different angles even uh, you'll be able to line it up pretty straight and then just kind of drill right up the center of the shaft. Again, nothing super complicated. Just be careful and make sure you get it straight so you don't poke your bit out the side of the stick. And I've gone a good distance in there. I've got a good, good distance in there so I know that I can use a pretty big piece of my paper clip. I'm just going to take my hobby clippers and clip it. Take off that round part first. I want a straight part and clip it a good length, something I think will be a good spine for it to be nice and sturdy. So I've decided on that. Now, you may find that you cut your piece too long and then when you put it in, the stick doesn't quite touch the trunk. Or you can cut it too short and then when you go to put it in the stick, it just falls in. And this one is a little bit too short. It's not quite too short, but it's a little bit too short. So I want to cut just a little bit longer one. There we go. And uh, so the point there was to always dry fit. Basically, always make sure you dry fit. Now that's got a good helping sticking out. And I basically just want to hook that in to my trunk and make sure that when I put them together, they do touch each other. Now all I'm going to do is take my crazy glue and glue it on. And make sure to get lots of glue up into the hole. That's why I like these little crazy glue bottles you get at the dollar store. You can literally just point the uh, hole into the hole and just squeeze. And that's full up. I'm going to take my paper clip and put her inside. Take my 
my stick. Soak this in in crazy glue. Make sure you get lots up in the hole. Put it down on my pin. And then if you want, you can even just take a, take the crazy glue and just soak the end. Soak the connection just to make sure that's nice and sturdy. And then when that dries, that'll be real strong. Plus we're going to do further coats on top of this. I'll show you later in this tutorial to make them even stronger. But for right now, that's great for a branch. So I'm just going to go crazy, drill a bunch of holes, cut a bunch of paper clips, and start gluing on some sticks on all of these pieces. <laughs> Final step as far as building these is just to add a little more realism. Obviously, they're too flat right now. Like we've added the 3D, made it more 3D, I should say, by adding branches to the tree, a little more realism to it. But the ground is still like a CD, right? And we don't want that. Plus, we've got these globs from uh, the base of the tree. Now I told you to do that, and that's actually a good thing because now it's going to create a nice transition up the tree from the ground to the tree creating sort of the illusion that something's under the ground like roots and what have you or that it's collecting around the base of the tree um, as well we don't want it perfectly flat on the top right we want a little bit of bumps and what have you to sort of create the realism of actual ground especially a forced ground so normally I would use spackle and I would spackle the whole base and spackle all up the tree like up towards the base of the tree and everything but spackle doesn't stick to this plastic at all pretty much like it'll just chip right off and yes we're gonna be covering this in glue and paint and what have you but um, I find just latex caulking sticks much better and basically I just want to squeeze it out into areas like around the tree here you guys saw me use this caulking in the zombie swamp video, the recent one. Um, I'm just trying to use it up basically. But at the same time, uh, you can't use spackle for this. So I'm going to use this to create that nice transition between the base of the train feature and the base of the tree. But also in certain areas where like it's just, oh sorry I'm holding that a little bit too far to the front there. Certain areas like here where it's just a little too flat, I'm going to throw a big mound of it there too. But I don't want to do that too much because we do still want to be able to place figures on this obviously. I also want to get a bunch towards the middle because that's where my hole is. So right now it's just tape, which is super weak, right? Things will puncture it if you're not careful. And the last thing you need is a hole in the center of your terrain piece. So I'm going to put a glob right there, especially on top of the uh, hole. I know I'm just barely touching it, guys, but what we're going to do next is we're just going to spread it out. This is probably good enough for now. And then I'm just going to take it and taper up towards the base of the tree, filling in the gap around the hot glue glob, but using the hot glue glob to fill the space. And I can just go right to the edge of the terrain piece with it, with my finger, and scrape off my finger on the edge of the terrain piece. And that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. If you can see that. I give thanks to the taxi that brought you here. No, I wouldn't trade laughter for gold. No. Isn't it priceless?
useless everything works out isn't it perfect everything now that my caulking is dry, I just have here my standard basing sand and PVA glue and I'm just going to paint all of the bases of these terrain pieces as well as all of the white styrofoam areas. Now I don't want to paint too much glue up onto the trees, if I get a little bit onto the base that's fine, of course there's going to be dirt at the base of the trees. But I want to make this foam also look like concrete and the best way I'm going to do that is just by covering it with the fine sand. I have here a mixture of fine sand, gravel, and like some larger... I guess two types of sand and then gravel all mixed in together uh, yeah so I'm just gonna take PVA paint all over the base all over the styrofoam and then cover it in sand and it's too soon. And it's too soon. So I don't know if you guys could notice, but I actually went over them a second time. If you notice, when I was done the fifth one, I went back over the first one again with the sand. That's just because I globbed on the white glue real thick. The reason I globbed it on real thick is not only to fill gaps, but also the styrofoam will really soak up the glue, like you can see on this one here. Oh, that's all naked. I put glue there. It's just it soaked in so much that it didn't grab any of the sand. Well, grab very little of the sand. Uh, and you'll find that the glue will start to pool in crevices and things like that and as because the sand is heavy uh, Especially the fine sand will turn to mud and then the larger pieces will start to move towards the bottom Slowly slower than you can see by the time you're done the fifth one You'll be able to notice it on the first one So that's why I go over it a second time with the sand just to make sure that everything's kosher and uh, All I'm gonna do now is wait for it to dry so now that my sand's dry, I just want to make sure that I seal in all of these trees before I start putting paint on them. Because right now, like I say, I used actual sticks, so I'm going to have some bark that's going to want to peel off. Also, these sticks are very flimsy, and yes, on the joints where I've super glued them, or crazy glued them, I guess, suppose in this case, they're actually pretty strong, but believe it or not, white glue is pretty much the same thing as wood glue. I mean, they are literally pretty much exactly the same thing. So by soaking these trees in white glue, as well as getting lots around the joints, uh, it'll basically cement them together. Make sure that the bark stays on. Um, like I say, I dried these out for a long time before I used them, uh, because you want to make sure that there's no moisture trapped underneath the bark. Otherwise, you will get some decay in the future, even underneath your white glue. But right now, because they are so dry, they're just going to soak in the PVA. Like, like sponges and so all I'm doing is just going around and covering the trees in a nice thick coat of PVA here my nice sort of smaller brush Now that all our PVA is dry, our sand is dry, everything's good to go, I can throw my first coat of paint on. So the first thing I'm going to do, as I always do, is paint the entire piece brown. And as usual, I'm going to be using my espresso rust paint. Uh, basically, I like to use rust paint, as I've said before, just because it seals everything nicely, it provides a nice protective coat. And because we're using many different types of materials, it has a tendency to stick 
to pretty much any surface, whether it be glass, plastic, wood, uh, in this case, styrofoam, sand, etc. I'll be right behind. Oh no. So now that my brown base is fully dry, actually I will comment that uh, what I didn't show you guys off camera was that I actually painted the bottoms as, of the CDs as well with the rust paint. Not only to hold in this piece of duct tape that I put here, but also to not make it look like a CD. <laughs> and it'll add a nice protective layer to the bottom of it. Uh, just make sure you're putting it on thick and do multiple coats, otherwise, yes, it will flake off in the future. So anyway, long story short, uh, now that the brown is dry, I'm just gonna. I've got my three rock pieces here, the three of the five that include rocks, including these rock walls, and I'm just gonna give all the rock faces a nice heavy gray dry brush. And they're killing the music. Well, I'll write a song for you, I'll write a song for me I'll write until my pen explodes I like it really fucking matters what I have to say so Now that our grey is done, we're going to go on to uh, dry brushing our trees with just a lighter brown, and in this case I'm using cinnamon brown They're killing the muse And they're killing the muse Right, now I want to keep these in coherency with all the other terrain pieces we've been doing on the channel lately, so as usual, I'm going to paint the dry brush the dirt with a yellow oxide. As long as you all look and sound the same They're killing the muse And they're killing the muse I've got my yellow on there. I'm just gonna go ahead and now and paint my little skull detail that I threw on here I actually realized that I didn't show you guys that on camera But while the sand was drying I just threw my little skull detail on here And I wanted to do the yellow first because that way I can paint this now with a very quick dry brush of uh, Bane blade brown and then uh, we're gonna tie the whole piece together well, I don't dance or try for you. Now the reason I only did the one color on the skull and only one color on everything else, like we've got our deep brown, um, we've dry brushed everything up to like what basic color we want them to be. The subscribers of our channel will notice that I pretty much finish off every terrain piece with just a general uh, light dry brush of like a bone color. And no matter what colors you've used in the terrain piece, that way not only will it sort of display that pop, that like shine that you would get from like direct sunlight, but also um, it unifies all the different colors that we've used on all the pieces. So we've got like four different colors that we've used here. Um, just to bring everything together. Also, because the skull is a skull, I only needed the one color of sort of bone, and then I'm going to uh, dry brush, like I say, the trees, the dirt, the rocks, and the skull with a very light dry brush. 
of uh, the actual paint I'm using. It's called unbleached titanium, but it's basically the same thing as you shop deep bone or bleached bone. <laughs> It just adds a nice gray tone to all the pieces. So that is basically it as far as painting them. I mean, they're done. We're just gonna start adding all of our foliage and stuff. Now the first thing I'm gonna add is gonna be my moss. Now on a couple of the other concrete and uh, rock pieces that we've done so far for this table uh, have involved these as vines. So I'm just gonna go around and attach these to these pieces as well, just as I've done in past videos. Wishes good luck to me Cause no one's come close Well I'm letting you know All of the projects Are on hold I decided that before I do my uh, protective layer on the moss, I'm actually going to apply my static grass and my clump foliage because I think I'm going to use the same glue and water technique that I'm using on the moss on the clump foliage. So I'd rather do it once rather than do it twice. And so I'm just going to put static grass on this and uh, I'm going to do some clump foliage for the tops of the trees and then we're going to go from there. All of the projects. A brown hold I made of some dark green clump foliage, some like yellowish sort of dead leaf clump foliage, and then what I actually also did is I chopped up that uh, same moss that we used for the vines here and uh, threw it into the mix just to add a lighter green to the mix so that we have sort of a dark green, a light green, and then sort of that yellow. Um, and I've just done one off camera just as a test just to make sure everything was kosher and it looks okay I mean, I haven't used this mixture before so I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out uh, I may add more leaves to that the next time around but for right now that's okay for what it is and uh, yeah, so I'm just going to move on to the rest of them so in order to do this um, I actually, f I used to use PVA glue to stick on my clump foliage and then I realized how fiddly it was. It kept falling off all the time, especially because the clump foliage, when it gets wet, it gets heavy and then there's nothing really holding it to the branches, to the trunk where I want to put it. So what I'm actually going to use here is just some crazy glue, the stuff you buy at the Dollar Ram. don't use your expensive super glue on projects like this because we're going to be going through a lot of this and I've got a few bottles in the background. Um, and more or less, I'm just super gluing these clumps on. So I am going to just grab a clump with my hand, right? I'm going to put some super glue on the end of this branch. Sorry, crazy glue. It's not super glue, it's the cheap stuff. There we go. Grab a clump and literally just like press it on all the way around. Make sure to get it on all the sides because the crazy glue definitely ran down the branch a little bit and that's just going to instantly stick it. This is not of course the finished product but at least it gets it on there right now and I don't have to worry about it falling off while I'm working on the other branches whereas if we had just used PVA it would just, trust me, it just droops and falls off. So I want to cover the top of the tree trunk because clearly we don't want that to look like a broken stick. We want it to look like it's naturally part of the tree. And the best way to do that is just to cover it in clump foliage. There we go. And I'm just going to put it on the end of each of the branches. And I want you to stay.
Last and final step on our pieces is just to seal in all of the clump foliage as well as all of the vines that we made with our moss. So as I've done in past t terrain tutorials in this series even, um, I'm going to use white glue and water the same way I did in the cardboard can building as well as in the past I've done it on the quick and easy 40k building video, um, the vines that is. So we're going to apply the same method to the clump foliage and basically I've just got some PVA to some standard white glue and then uh, I'm just gonna add water to it just as much as I think is necessary stir it around a bunch and make sure to mix it in real good because you want to make sure that there's no white glue like clumps you want to make sure it's pretty much water for the most part but obviously because of the glue in it it, it will harden up the vines and the foliage so, as you can see, I'm adding a lot of water to it. And because both the clump foliage is basically a sponge, and the fact that the vines are dried moss, they'll soak it up real good. So you just want to make sure you get it real wet, and make sure to push in towards the trunk of the tree. Don't ever start to swipe, because especially with the clump foliage, the same way it is with the vines, with the moss, um, it will clump off, fall off. So you want to make sure you get a nice good coat on there and it looks pretty ridiculous right now like if you guys are seeing this it uh, looks pretty brutal right now but uh, trust me it will dry clear and it will add a lot of durability to this foliage. Like honestly um, if you just left it it would look great for maybe a couple of games and then enough of it, see a piece of it just flaked off when I touched it enough of that would start to flake off over time with this stuff, with the white glue water mixture, I can even take that clump out of my glue and put it back on somewhere that I think it should be and just make sure that our clump foliage is soaking it all in nicely and that there's not really any dry spots but at the same time, see right there, I got a drip that's running through. It's starting to fall out the bottom. I'm just going to take my brush and sort of push it back in. And make sure to keep your brush nice and soaked because you want to make this stuff nice and soaked. So the drier your brush is, the more likely the foliage is to stick to your brush rather than to the piece of terrain. So that's all of them. I mean, I'm sure you guys could see as you were, even as you were watching it in fast motion there, I came in with a paper towel at various points. And that's just to catch any areas where I noticed it really dripping off and cooling too much. Because the white glue will dry mostly clear, but for the most part, um, if it's on too thick, it will dry with a little bit of fog or a little bit of white. And I want to avoid that as much as possible. I want it to dry clear. So anywhere I see a massive glob, of course I'm going to, uh, it might still dry clear, but usually it, it has the propensity to dry foggy. So anywhere I see one, I'm just going to hit it with a paper towel or hit it with my brush, smooth it out so that it will dry clear, 
And uh, that is literally it, guys. I mean, that's our forest pieces that we made out of CDs. So I'm going to let these dry, and uh, they're going to be ready for the table. So hope you guys enjoyed that sweet little terrain video. Now we've actually got five little pieces that we're going to add to our grass table. Just another one of our trash to treasure terrain videos. I love taking stuff you just find around the house. Uh, stuff you, you plan to just throw out and turn it into terrain. I mean, who of us uses CDs anymore? I mean, it's kind of sad. I mean, for people of my generation especially that grew up on CDs to hear that they are now obsolete technology pretty much. So I've got binders of CDs lying around, and I don't even have a CD player. I'm not going to lie there. I have one, actually, now that I think of it. None of my computers have CD-ROMs, DVD-ROMs even. That's even passe at this point. So I got all these freaking CDs, and I really have nothing to do with them. So this is what we're going to do with them. They make great bases for terrain. The great news is because they don't warp, they don't change shape as you add things to them. The downside, as we noticed, is that they are very shiny plastic, so um, that's why I used the caulking as opposed to my standard spackle that I would use as the base of a terrain piece. Um, and you may find that some of your paint may not want to stick to it very much, that's why we use the rust paint, because it sticks to pretty much anything, and if you really don't feel safe with the rust paint, something I didn't do here, you can always give them a good coat of matte lacquer and it should hold everything in nicely. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that terrain video. There's gonna be a whole bunch more terrain videos coming up on the channel. As always, I love making terrain and I'm just gonna keep making terrain because we got some tables to build for our battle reports. So, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification because it will tell you when these videos come out. Also, check out all our other terrain playlists, uh, our battle reports, hobby tutorials. We do it all, guys. Also, make sure to check out the podcast. On top of that, we are now doing Twitch. We are on Twitch TV slash Encounter Wargaming. So if you want to see us do some live stuff, make sure to follow us there. And uh, you'll be able to see all our cool live content. On top of that, if you want to see the live content after it's been broadcasted, uh, you got to be a patron to do it. So you just go to the link below in the description. Check out our Patreon campaign. That is not the only reward that you will get, but for as little as a dollar, you get a whole bunch of extra stuff, and all the money goes right back into the channel to improve our quality of our content and keep things running around here. We are proud to now be able to offer you 10% off thewarpainter.com, a great Canadian supplier of paints um, and hobby supplies, especially the stuff that's really hard to find in a lot of stores like Vallejo, uh, Scale 75, uh, stuff like that. So, anyway, check them out, check out our Patreon, and we will see you at our next encounter. Like a monkey in a rocket on his way back home. Okay.